Hello everybody and welcome back to Gardens and Crystals with me Wesley Peterson and today I'm out in my garden early. It's about quarter to seven in the morning and well I just decided I wanted to get out of my garden and get some jobs done that I need to get done right now because I haven't been to my cottage for a while and it's now that if you look around here look at all these lovely little yellow heads coming up these flowers on my beautiful small or miniature daffodils that come up all around my garden everywhere they self-seed all over the garden and they've been here since i bought the cottage and at first they were growing around the edge of our property in the garden there and when i started making the borders here with these rocks around the edge i moved some of the bulbs into the borders as you can see around the back of this border here but they also come up wherever they want in the grass so if you look over on the side next to our cottage there are daffodils coming up in the grass everywhere all over the place so my job today is to get in and dig up all of those daffodils that are growing in the grass and get them into my borders so that I get this lovely arrangement of miniature daffodils in and around the borders themselves. And as I pan around, I see them a little bit here and there all over the place. So I want to take you in now for a closer look so you can see what I mean, where I've placed them in the borders, where they've come up and where they've just decided to pop up in the grass, around and about, wherever they want. <laughs> Which means they're fantastic little daffodils to have in your garden because you can get lots of them easy peasy now i do nothing to help these daffodils no fertilizing no watering no nothing they come up themselves every year more and more and more everywhere and i absolutely love it because i actually haven't got round to planting many bulbs in my garden these are also absolutely wonderful because they are 100 percent deer resistant they are everywhere and the deer don't touch them. I even have captured pictures of some deer in the Silverway area of our garden, which is over by the Crystal Woods area. And they come in and they forage in my garden. And I've seen that they've nibbled up the bark and some of my laurel trees, which I'm really upset about. <laughs> but I am slowly but surely figuring out how I can put plants in my garden where the deer can't get to them if they like them. And the ones that they do like that are in the wrong places, well, that's my fault because I have no fencing. So I have to adapt my garden to the wildlife. Now, getting back to the daffodils, these only get to around, I would say 10, 15 centimeters high max. So at some point, maybe this autumn, this year, I'm going to order myself a few big bags of daffodils. And I think I'm going to plant out in different borders, different varieties of daffodils because they work here. I know the deer aren't going to eat them. I've tried with tulips. I have tulips that come up, but they never get to stay up for very long. I have pink ones and I have red ones. I have yellow ones. Some manage to stay up for a while but then they get nibbled down by the deer. The deer love the tulips. So my garden eventually is going to become a daffodil garden. It is now early to mid April and there aren't many flowers in the garden except my Daphne mesereum, which is a beautiful pink flower, which is still flowering right now and it smells quite nice. Um, but apart from that, there are some plants that come up in the woodland area with white flowers on them but the highlight of my garden right now are these daffodils so i want to take you in now for that closer look before i start moving those that are in the grass into the borders so we'll start down here and you can see some of the beautiful daffodils coming up here aren't they absolutely beautiful and then I have some on the other side of the stairs here coming up. Those. Look 
and then they're coming up in this border here behind in the botanical garden lots coming up there so you can see the ones here outside of the borders growing by the drains and then these beautiful daffodils in the border so cute and then in this border see them and then in the grass again so these ones have to come up so we'll just whiz around a little bit here so you can see all the different daffodils coming up in the grass all over the place it's amazing that they can self seed like this all over the place and then they grow in clumps with lots of little baby bulbs and then they get bigger and bigger and flower out it's amazing So, I really hope you enjoyed seeing this little tour around of all the wonderful miniature daffodils in my garden. At the moment, there's a squirrel jumping around in the trees behind me. It's so cute. I'm probably not going to be able to capture it on camera, but I'm going to try. So here's the little squirrel that lives in our garden. It's a little red squirrel, so cute. And it has its dray in our thuya bushes. There he goes. This is so cute. Oh, I'm so happy that I managed to capture this on camera so you can see. There he is. Oh, he's so cute. There he goes. And his home is actually over there. And that is why he's running over there. <laughs> All the way up to the top of our largest oak tree. Now let's get on with digging. So what I need to remember when I start digging out these daffodils is that I need to go a little bit deeper than I think I need to go, if you know what I mean. Most of the time their bulbs are actually quite deep down, which surprises me. And I've cut a few off, which is quite sad, but it doesn't matter because you know that those are gonna come back up the next year if the bulb is still in the ground. But I want the whole bulb, of course. So I'm going to start on the side here where you can see there are lots that have spread themselves out in the grass and I have myself a container and my shovel and this is going to be really nice and fill out my borders even more. So just a little shovel and a dig, dig, dig and up they pop as easy as anything. <laughs> oh, this is fun. So I just want to show you quickly here. Look at this bulb here small little bulbs they're absolutely fantastic and look how good my soil is here just one shovel full and it's got worms in it so that's absolutely perfect i'm happy to see that it means that this soil has got a lot of nutrients and all the microorganisms are happy and the larger organisms are happy and look at the roots they're looking very healthy on these bulbs so the difficult thing is as you can see here is there's a lot of turf around the top and that is where it can be easy to snap off the top of the bulb and of course we want to keep these flowers and these stems going for a while so I'm going to have to rip around the edge I'll just put this little worm <laughs> look at this cute little worm just put that back in the border for a minute because I want to keep my worms of course we have to break away very gently around these leaves to get these bulbs out without ripping them apart so it's quite a delicate job and some of them I might not have the whole bulb yes I do have the whole bulb it's just it's just hiding so here now if I can pull this one out I'll be able to show you the whole thing yes look at this so there we go there's one beautiful bulb look at that lovely lovely so now I just need to get these into my crate and carry on. So I just want to make sure I get all the turf off from around them so that they don't suddenly break. 
look at this another little worm has popped out and the bulbs are looking so good oh and and healthy and we know the worms are our gardening friends they are so important they create tunnels where air can flow in the soil where water can flow through the soil and they actually have hormones in their stomach so that when they eat all of the organic material and it comes through their bodies they leave this hormone in the soil which stimulates plants to produce healthy roots so worms are very important for so many different things and well i've grown to really appreciate them back in the soil he goes but now i want to keep my turf of course i don't want lots of holes all over my garden so i need to get as much of the soil back into the hole get my grass back on and press down the area again quick and easy just like this and just that one little patch was seven bulbs <laughs> you can imagine how many i'm going to have to spread around by the time i'm finished with this it's so nice out doing things like this in the garden forgetting the rest of the world in one's own little bubble in touch with mother nature and oh it's just such a freeing feeling i love it so look at this little bunch i can't even tell you how many bulbs there are in this little bunch that i can spread out in the borders there are so many small bulbs and that just shows you how easy it is and how quickly this plant spreads itself and as i'm going along here i'm thinking in my mind where do i want to put all these bulbs i have other areas like in my courtyard garden I have a border there that doesn't have any bulbs in it and I would be able to put a lovely border around the edge of that and then I can put some in some other borders that I don't have any at the moment and they'll just spread. This is just going so well and I don't have to even disturb the grass too too much. I'm even wondering now what other colour combinations I can buy to add to my collection. Well that was three more. Can you hear the cranes? Lovely. It's so amazing hearing the cranes in the background, thinking that they've flown all the way back up here to Sweden from Africa, marking the beginning of spring. And look what was right next to these bulbs here, just to show you how much is going on in and around the soil. Look at this, it's antennas flashing around all over. <laughs> I just think that's so cute. I, oh no, there's actually two, or is it one? It's one long one. So look at this. Now I don't mind touching the insects when I've got gloves on, but I of course wouldn't want to touch it without. <laughs> but that is really long, look at that. Oh, the life in the garden. It's so exciting and we need to make sure we keep the soil in our garden as undisturbed as possible so that these creatures can do their job of creating fantastic soil for us. And that's why I think I'm finding so many insects while I'm digging up these bulbs because I really hardly ever dig up in the grass or in my borders. They are raised borders, they're no dig beds and I just put more and more leaves and stems and branches and all sorts of things on the soil so that the microorganisms and the fungi and the bacteria can break it down and make it into new soil for me and makes life much easier, keeps the soil much healthier. You don't damage any of the biodiversity that's going on in the soil. So that's just a little thing to think about in your garden dig as little as possible but at the moment I can't help it because I need to get these bulbs up and in my borders. <laughs> Look at that crawling around these bulbs. Oh. I'm always so fascinated by insects and I always look forward to spring and summer when there are so many around and about and because one's working in the garden and moving rocks and so forth one gets to see so many more and it's such a joy. So just to show you how many bulbs I have just from this little corner here 
I must have at least 30, 40 bulbs already just in this little mass, which is perfect for carrying on in the border just over there that actually hasn't got any around the edge. So I'm gonna put them in there straight away and then it will look gorgeous now and every year to come. So you can see in front of this border, I still have a lot more bulbs to take up around the edge there. I will do that, but I just want to get these into this border now because I have a lot more bulbs to collect around the garden. <laughs> so I don't need to keep you hanging around while I collect all those and put them out in the garden. But I'll just show you as I do this one border here. This actually has some tulips coming up on the edge here. They're lovely pink tulips, but I know that as soon as they get a little bit longer, they will be munched down by the deer that come in the garden. So it's time to get these beautiful little daffodils all around the edge of this border. And I'm going to try and spread these actually in the whole border here. I have epimedium that's coming up in here. A little hole, place it in, press it down, done. It just takes a little patience. So let's do this in fast forward. So I found that these bulbs grow very well in this brown fertile soil I have here and also in sandier soils I have around and as long as the soil is well draining then they'll be absolutely fine. Oh this is just such a joy and what a perfect time to do this. It feels like Easter time doesn't it? Well in Swedish these are actually called Porskelilja which means Easter lilies. <laughs> So that's what they are. I'm just in my element right now. This is just so oh, nice. So I just want to see if I can get this one that's out on the edge up, put it straight in the border, or these two, I should say. Hope I got them. I thought this was going to happen when I tried to cut corners. I took my little trowel and I capped off the bulb, which is still in the ground, and got the top only. So I will put this in the vase indoors and enjoy it but don't cut corners because you'll leave the bulb in the ground, which isn't the point, right? But anyway, I'll find it next year. Just one loss isn't too bad, right? This is a lovely bundle, but I need to split it so I get the whole border covered with these lovely bulbs. The bulbs break away from each other so easily. Now for the last ones. I think I'll just put these in as clumps. So just to finish off here, I want to take these last couple of bulbs that are outside the border here, put them in this border behind me, and then I'm completely done. And this border is actually full of lovely miniature daffodils now, and I'm so happy about that. Oh, it just feels so nice to have been able to get up early today to get this job done. I think when I'm completely finished, I would have pulled up hundreds of bulbs. There they are, two big, lovely <laughs> bulbs with flowers and I have a couple more here. Put this back down. This one. Hot stony ground here. I hope I got them. Yes, there's one. There's two. Perfect. And always a load of worms coming up at the same time which makes me so happy got a lovely fertile soil going on here then there we go three more little bulbs so that was seven more bulbs just out of this little area amazing well my battery died all of a sudden so i decided to go around and collect more of these wonderful miniature daffodils that are growing in the grass and i think in my container here i have around a hundred <laughs> bulbs to place around in the borders like I've just done here and it just looks so much better look at these beautiful little flower heads around here and there are others that will come up this border has enough because these clump and will become bigger and bigger clumps in no time the way they spread around the garden it's not that hard for them to spread so this is going to look beautiful and now I have all of these that I've decided I want to put a line along the edge of our cottage here, where the grass grows right up to the wall here on the side. 
but I have nothing else growing along here. I have no border and I think it will look pretty with all these little daffodils coming up in the springtime. So these are the flowers that are the focus in April here in my garden. So that's all I have for you for this daffodil hunting and replanting video. So all I have to say now is I wish you a very happy Easter. I hope you get lots of lovely Easter eggs and you go Easter egg hunting for your chocolates and your Fabergé eggs and all sorts of things. And if you're lucky enough to enjoy a couple of days of work, then have yourself a wonderful time. Aren't they just the cutest thing? All of these. And to think that they pop up free of charge around and about in the garden to spread more and more beauty. <laughs> so all I have to say now is thank you very much once again for watching Gardens and Crystals with me, Wesley Peterson. Please remember to like, subscribe and hit the bell so you know when my next video will be coming up and I will see you again very, very soon. Goodbye. Thank you.